Hey everybody, Dr. Andrew here, and I'm really excited for tonight. Welcome to our Baby Bumps and Beyond webinar. This is everything that you need to know for your roadmap to pregnancy, birth, and then life beyond that with an infant and, and adjusting to um, new life with a baby. And I'm really looking forward to share, sharing with you because this is something that we talk about every day in the office. This is something that we are living personally. Many of you who know us know that we've got a two-year-old son ourselves, and then uh, baby number two is on the way here in just five weeks, which, okay, I told my wife that, you know, hey, this is so exciting. We're having a baby next month, and she was thrilled. Uh, if you're watching this later, we're in December of uh, end of 2018 here. We're due mid-January. So she was super excited that baby is coming next month. I, second later, told her, you know what? Unfortunately, the baby's not coming until next year. And she's like all upset about me. But that is life with pregnancy. It's a little bit unpredictable. It's a little bit sassy sometimes. Uh, but you know what? You're growing a baby. You're doing an amazing thing. And you can be sassy, I guess. So I'm really looking forward to share with everyone because your birth matters. Birth is something that gets glossed over and isn't taken seriously. But it is important for mom. It is important for baby. It is really important to have the best start to life possible. Uh, bear with me here a second. I just want to make sure that you are all seeing and hearing me uh, because we're doing this Facebook Live webinar through Zoom. And me standing here talking to myself is no good for anybody. So let me check. Perfect. I see we're live here. I'm going to keep tabs on that as we go through this evening. So if you have questions or thoughts or, or comments on what we're talking about, please throw them there and I'll be able to um, do my best to answer those questions as they come up. Uh, but I wanna get started with just talking a little bit about why we're talking about this. Why is pregnancy and birth something worth discussing? And really it comes down to that statement that I said a couple of seconds ago that your birth matters. Uh, personally, something that really hurts me that I hate hearing is maybe we're talking with mom on her second or third pregnancy, or maybe it's years down the road and we're trying to help her child deal with some of the health challenges that they're experiencing. One way or another, we talk about how those early, um, how that first birth went or how that child's birth went. And I hear a lot of regret. I hear a lot of, I wish I would have known, or, oh man, if only someone would have told me this way back then, or I wish, whatever it is. There's a lot of regret. And that is hard for me to hear because, I mean, there's nothing we can do at that point. You can't go back. You can't change anything. It's, it's done. And I don't want that. I don't want to have more um, pregnant moms having those feelings and thoughts down the road about the pregnancy because it matters for you. And that how you experience birth um, affects how you're able to heal, how you're able to recover. There's way too much really PTSD and, and really a lot of stress and anxiety following a, a tough birth. It correlates a lot with postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression. If that process didn't go as you were expecting or as you were planning, it can be really tough physically, mentally, emotionally, um, in ways that people aren't really talking about in ways that people don't really understand. So we want to avoid that. We want to help you have your ideal pregnancy and birth, whatever that looks like for you. And um, one thing that I think is important to touch base on is this isn't about what we think your birth should be. You might know us personally, you might know our story. My wife had a home birth with our first son. Uh, we're planning a home birth again here now in uh, the Pittsburgh region with the office. And that is what we feel is the best fit for our situation, but that is absolutely not what you should do. You should have a baby wherever you feel most comfortable, wherever you feel most supportive, wherever you feel that gives you the best chance to have the ideal labor and delivery that you want. So this isn't about me saying what you should do, what she shouldn't do. It's about you taking the wheel of your birth journey. Yes, you need a guide, you need a team, and that's what we're gonna talk about tonight, but you need to take the wheel of your birth journey and you should be the captain of that ship. You should be the one calling the shots, making the decisions with the proper information, with the proper support around you. So that's what we're about tonight is making sure that you have the information that you need, making sure that you have the resources that you need to go through that process and end up feeling empowered, end up feeling accomplished. Um, I know, from our own experience, Laura said like having had that experience, having birthed a baby on her own, not on her own in the sense of people think that having a home birth is literally just you alone. It's not the case at all. There's midwives, there's medical professionals, there's people there supporting you, but on her own in the sense of not with interventions, not with outside help, there's nothing more empowering than that feeling. 
if you can do that, it's literally like, what can I do? What can I accomplish? And that's what honestly, I feel like every mom deserves, whether it's a home birth or whether it's what, anything in between. What we want to talk about tonight is your options and how you can have that positive experience. Um, so to really get into that, what we need to do is say, what is the common birth path like? And for the majority of the rest of the, the webinar here, I'm going to bring up some slides that will help illustrate and talk about um, what we need to talk about here. So let me, let me throw that up on the screen here. Perfect. So to talk about how we can make sure that you have your ideal birth experience, we need to talk about what's common today. And common is a lot of birth intervention. You can see on the slide there, eight out of 10 births are augmented. They're intervened with in some sort of fashion. That might look like um, you're getting induced in some capacity. Maybe you have gone past what your medical professionals are comfortable with or you're late. Uh, maybe there's health complications that are uh, leading to providers wanting to get that process started before um, it, it needs to be. Whatever the reason is, a lot of moms are getting induced early. So that could be their membranes are being ruptured, maybe cervical ripening, like cervidil, stuff like that, mechanical dilators, the balloons that um, are inserted, or Pitocin, you know, that synthetic oxytocin to help initiate contractions. Uh, other interventions that are extremely common are using epidural, um, episiotomy, which is uh, cutting of the skin to, to widen that opening, C-section, forceps vacuum extraction. It is extremely, extremely common to have a birth that has some sort of intervention uh, along with it. And I say common specifically uh, for a reason, because it's not normal. Yes, it's common, but that doesn't mean it's something that's normal and something should be taking place. And really, there's, um, there's some downsides to that that we're going to talk about here in just a second. So if this common path is what you want and you are aware of the consequences, you're aware of the pros and cons and the risks and the benefit, that is perfect. That is what we're all about. Um, it's not about choosing one way or another. It's about choosing an informed path that makes sense for you, that fits for your family and the goals that you have. So that it's perfectly fine. We, this isn't a good or bad statement about it. This is just reality. Birth is being intervened with. Moms and babies aren't allowed to be able to call the shots as their bodies are orchestrating, and that's leading to some consequences. So that's kind of the question I have then is, how do we get a slide to go here? There we go. Um, what do you want? Do you want to have a birth or do you want to have a delivery? And uh, us birth workers, we, we joke about that a lot, you know, because that delivered word um, although that's the name of this presentation, it's done in kind of a sarcastic tone. Like, yes, a, a pizza is delivered or your Chinese food is delivered. A baby is born. A baby is born, meaning you are the one who orchestrates that. You are the one who's calling the shots. Um, not you a bystander that gets in the way of that. Not you being told when to push, when not to push. You being told what you're allowed to do or what you're not allowed to do. That is what really um, gets us fired up and gets us bothered is that when moms aren't supported and have given the chance to have the birth that they want, when they're told what to do, when they're told what they can and cannot do. So that's my question for you as we're starting here tonight. What do you want? And like I said a second ago, you can choose whatever you want. I just want to make sure that you know what the, um, what the options are and what the consequences of those options are. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about what is at stake. This is something that we personally see a lot in the office because we work a lot with newborns or toddlers or older kids who are dealing with these sorts of challenges, these types of challenges. So we know in depth the nervous system relationship. We see the patterns that take place time and time again. And that when a birth process, when a pregnancy is full of stress and intervention, then the birth is full of birth trauma, either hands pulling and twisting at the head and neck, C-section, vacuum extraction. When all those things are in place, it leads to more often than not this perfect storm, which could look anything like a newborn with colic and sleep issues or reflux and constipation, you know, torticollis, plagiocephaly, which is that head that is stuck in a certain position and developing a flat spot, probably difficulty nursing, aren't able to latch very well. And usually that leads to then a toddler who's dealing with stuff like ear infections recurrently. You know, they're the kid that gets one every month or every other month and has at least one round of tubes or is on the brink of it. Um, that kid gets older and fluid keeps draining. It usually turns into chronic 
tonsils, adenoids, strep throat, allergies, respiratory infections, more chest things. And ultimately, if this path doesn't get adjusted, uh, pun intended, or, or corrected in some way, we see those kids ending up as ones who are dealing with motor and speech delays, neurodevelopmental disorders like sensory processing disorder, ADHD, um, autoimmune challenges, anything along those lines. So that's what I want to make sure that people understand is that how we birth affects not just mom in her physical, mental, emotional healing and well-being, but it affects the child's um, health and check, it affects the child's outcome and trajectory. So there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of um, uncertainty surrounding this, but I want to touch base on a few reasons that why you might want to consider having a birth that is more physiologically based, meaning is allowing your body to do what it's supposed to do, what it's designed to do, and allowing that inner flow and, and interchange between mom and baby and those hormones and those contractions to develop as they're supposed to. It allows you to stay in control of your birth plan. It gives you that sense of control and empowerment and accomplishment that we were talking about in the beginning here. It is it gives you more options. It gives you more flexibility and you know stuff we'll talk about here of can you get up? Can you be free to move throughout labor? Um, are you able to be in positions that are comfortable for you? Or are you, you know, stuck tethered to an IV or something like that? It's really hard to work through each wave, each surge, each contraction when you're stuck laying in a bed on your back, to, to be completely honest. Uh, so if you have an ideal, if you have a birth plan that is what you want to accomplish and how you want your birth to go, making sure that you have the right team and support around that is going to be crucial to giving you the flexibility to accomplish that and to have the resources that you need to do that. Um, and it leads to less likelihood of trauma, birth interventions, less likelihood of a C-section, which means that you're able to recover so much faster. And I know that's important for moms is recovering, not so you can get your beach bod back and everything like that, all, although you do want it, but recovering so you can care for your newborn, so you can care for your family, so you can go back to being a mom and a wife and, and whatever it is that life requires you to do. Uh, one thing I think that we hear all the time when it comes to birth is people will say, oh man, I could never have a, a natural childbirth or, or some, they hear Laura had a home birth. They say, oh, I could never do that. I have no pain tolerance whatsoever. And they think that my wife has some inhuman ability to withstand pain. And I can promise you that's not the case. We joke about this all the time, which is why I can't help but laugh a little bit because she will be the first one to say that she is the biggest baby when it comes to pain. So I'm not getting in trouble by pointing this out. The, uh, the, best, the best illustration we have of that is, I'm sure you're familiar with maybe your kids or yourself, you've gotten a little cut or a gash and it's more than just a paper cut, it's you know pretty significant. Making sure you clean it out and, and keep the area free of any dirt and debris. What you probably do during that is you put a little bit of peroxide on it, right? You wanna destroy and kill any germs, any bacteria that can get into the skin. I think it's happened twice now in the five years we've been married that there's been some sort of cut that Laura's had that we felt warranted uh, peroxide in, oh my gosh, you would think we are amputating a part of her body. It is the biggest ordeal, the biggest uh, trauma scene to go through that. So I promise it's not about having a extra high pain tolerance. It's about having a plan, having a preparation and really having, having the goal in mind. That's one thing that I hear a lot about, or I hear a lot from moms who've had uh, an empowering birth process is that thinking about, you know, this isn't painful, this isn't damaging, this isn't hurtful, but this is each surge, each contraction is getting me closer to meeting my baby is a huge mindset flip. Um, thinking it, you're not going to last very long if you view labor and delivery as a burn or as a muscle cramp or a workout that you just have to push through. It's too intense. It's too um, emotional of a moment to have that perspective. You need to think about it as how can I keep the end in mind, keep the goal that is uh, I'm going to get out of this birth process pulling me towards that finish line? And that's that's something that, you know, having a great birth class like we, we recommend and talk about is so crucial in changing your framework, changing your mindset to make sure that you're going into birth with the best chance for a positive outcome. So I keep talking about all these things that we want to do to have a good birth. Why don't I jump ahead to our team slide? The number one thing that we recommend for having a birth process, a birth experience that leaves you feeling accomplished and empowered and um, really like you did what you wanted to do is choosing the right team. 
So from the get go, that means who is going to be your main medical provider. The main choices there are a midwife or an OBGYN. You're familiar with OBGYN because the majority of you probably see them regularly for your woman's health care, um, probably your birth provider already. And that's great. There's tons of, of friends and people and patients we've had that have had great birth experiences through that um, OBGYN. But there's a lot of misconceptions about midwives. And so that's why I want to take a minute to explain um, what a midwife is. They're a birth professional. They're not a, a doctor in the same way that an OB is, but they're trained more in what is a normal physiologic birth. OBs are amazing at there's life threatening situations and they need to intervene to save the day, right? The emergency C-sections or um, anything along those lines. That's when we absolutely want the best of the best OBGYNs in the room calling the shots. But for the majority of births where that's not the case, having providers who are more accustomed to a, a normal or a physiological natural birth might be beneficial for you because they are, they're used to that. That's their norm, right? A surgeon's first thought is performing surgery, whereas a midwife, they're going to be more often than not more apt to support your goals and your wishes in that. So that's something that we that we recommend and talk about. And like I said, if someone wants to pursue a home birth, you don't do that alone. You can, I don't recommend it. Um, but you do that through a home birth midwife and a team who's going to support you through that. We've had regular, um, you know, prenatal checks. We've just got to the point where we've been having every two week visits. And now after our next visit, we'll be having weekly visits with our midwives coming to our house doing all the scans, the tests, the urinalysis, everything like that, that we need to do. So it's not that you're going it alone. You have birth teams, you just having people that are supportive of the goals that you want to accomplish. So that's really a key point in there is which one do you want to do? Which routes you want to go? In some cases, I'll, I'll be honest, the, the midwives that are part of certain practices, there's honestly not that much of a difference between what they're going to do versus an OB. But in general, as a rule of thumb, midwives are more likely than not uh, more conservative, uh, a little more conservative in their options and recommendations. I will strongly, strongly recommend the Midwife Center, which is the freestanding um, birth clinic down in Pittsburgh. It is an amazing facility where they have a ton of options for medical care, for birth care, but also have midwives who are going to support you in accomplishing that ideal birth that you want. So it's really a good middle ground for people who want to go more that holistic natural route, but are a little turned off by the home birth um, option for whatever reason. Midwife Center is definitely something worth looking into. So that's one big topic, one big role within the birth team. Another one is the role of a doula. So a doula is not a medical professional. They're someone who is going to be your ally, your support, your go-to for everything. You won't be Googling stuff. You'll be asking your doula because they are the ones who have experience with birth and they have knowledge surrounding a ton of topics on birth and they can help you guide inform and create that birth plan uh we would have a different completely different culture and world surrounding birth if every mom gave birth with a doula or prepared alongside of a doula or someone serving that role in their family so we cannot recommend it more we've had one for our first birth and are planning one for this birth as well so i just wanted to run through some topics or some uh some questions or some decisions that you would want to make that a, that a doula, as well as your birth providers, might be able to provide information with. So anything like glucola. Just had someone mention that they had that glucola test today. I've yet to meet someone who hasn't said it's disgusting and it makes them feel safe and all that stuff. You don't have to take the glucola test. There's a ton of other options. We can measure HbA1c. We can do a 50 grams of sugar through some other form of drink. That's what we've done both times is, you know, we've tested the blood sugar and we've measured that, but we've done it with a fruit smoothie or a sugary, you know, orange juice, applesauce combination, something like that. There's other ways to test and assess for gestational diabetes. So glucola, um, circumcision, you might want to have information uh, regarding that. You want to know what are your options for movement or eating or drinking during labor and delivery. That's like, I mean, if you're running a marathon or doing the long workout, you're going to need fuel. And in some birth environments, they you're not allowed to do that. So you want to make sure that that is something that you know, and that is something that you can kind of negotiate and make sure that your wishes and your plan is held to. Um, how far past your due date, your birth providers are going to let you go before they start pressuring you into getting induced. They can't force you to do anything. They just make recommendations and, and guidance. 
but it's really hard to make it through those last couple of days and, and weeks of pregnancy if you've got a team of birth providers just trying to nudge you towards getting induced when you know that's not what you truly want. Um, vitamin K shot versus the oral vitamin K. Skin to skin bonding with the baby during that golden hour. Delayed cord clamping, the Rogam shot, uh, GBS testing, whether or not you want antibiotics during labor, episiotomy, how quick the doctor is going to be to make that episiotomy versus wait and let your body take care of that. Um, what's the lighting and sound going to be like in the birth room? Do you want to save your placenta and encapsulate that afterwards for some of the benefits with balancing hormones and balancing postpartum depression in, in those weeks and months following birth? Um, do you want to make sure that they don't give the baby a bath right away because you want that protective vernix and covering on the skin to help their skin heal and, and be as healthy and safe as possible? Do you want friends and family at your birth? Do you want them kind of waiting at the hospital, waiting at the birth location? Or do you want them giving you some time and space to figure out breastfeeding and bond with the baby before they're coming in and visiting? That is just the tip of the iceberg of a thousand questions that are really important to think through as you're creating your birth team, as you're creating your ideal birth plan. And those are questions that a doula is really, really helpful at figuring out not, they're not gonna tell you what to do, but they're gonna be a support for you and help you make the decisions that are best for you. Doula is also going to be a huge help to your spouse. Uh, dads love having a doula around because basically the doula can help tell the dad how they can be helpful, right? They've been around births. They meet beforehand, so they know what mom wants, mom needs. And so they can kind of nudge dad towards that. So dads, you want to do that at your wife's birth. Um, we can go on and on, but huge, huge role for doulas. Other people in your birth team, you want some sort of lactation support. There might be a lactation consultant or counselor at the hospital, but you might need extra help um, in that down the road. We've got several individual um, solo practitioner lactation consultants that we recommend. There's the birth, uh, Breastfeeding Center of Pittsburgh that's great. Lots of good options for that. Either prenatally or postnatally, you might need a pelvic floor physical therapist. Um, we highly recommend a birth class that is going to prepare you mentally and physically and emotionally to go through that process and not just the hospital class. Unfortunately, more often than not, the hospital class is, it's not really about how you can have a, the birth that you want. It's more about how to be a good patient, how to follow the rules. And that's good to know. You maybe need to know that, but it's not so helpful for accomplishing what you want to accomplish. So having a birth class, we um, just recently had a series hosted here at the office called Hypnobirthing or Instinctive Birth, which is really, really great at helping moms tune into their own kind of um, body and, and signals and letting that be the director for labor and delivery. Um, what else we got here? Yoga massage, prenatal yoga, huge fan of that. Um, Laura out of Straight Elk Yoga is one that my wife's been going to these last couple weeks. Prenatal massage is huge uh, for helping mom's body be at ease. Prenatal chiropractors on there. Trust me, we're going to talk about that because that is um, one of the biggest pieces that we see being beneficial during pregnancy. Um, Nutrition, what should you eat? Baby wearing is a huge topic for more of the post birth life. Having a newborn around you and on you at all times is, is a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, so if you can wear that baby, there's so many benefits. They're close to you, they're warm, they're cuddled. You have freedom to use your hands and, and do whatever you need to do. Um, we're actually hosting a baby wearing class called Wear Your Newborn. So anyone like zero to three months, um, great time frame for that. So that is January 5th. Um, check out our events page and everything like that. Um, so many topics, so much that we could cover. I don't want this webinar to be three hours. Um, that's why you have these resources and these teams and that's conversations that we have throughout care. But I just wanna give you an introduction to some of the stuff that you really should be thinking about as you go through your pregnancy and as you prepare to be a parent, whether it's the first time or, or second or third or fifth kid. Um, once again, I'm, I'm keeping tabs on Facebook somewhat here. So if you have questions or thoughts on anything we were going through, please mention them and we'll do our best to cover that. Same thing if you're watching this as a replay down the road. Um, let us know if you've got questions or concerns and we'll um, address them. So I mentioned prenatal chiropractic care as well. I can't help but talk about the role of chiropractic during pregnancy because we see it and we get to experience it and hear the stories from moms every day. Anything from... Um, you know, a couple months ago, couldn't really function because 
you've got, you're trying to raise a toddler and you feel like you can't even walk up the stairs and you don't know how you're going to make it through the last three or four months of pregnancy to, you know, a couple weeks ago, mom who used to be riding the scooter around giant Eagle cause she couldn't really walk. Who's now feeling great, doing awesome. And, you know, it's having a completely different pregnancy. Uh, we've had countless babies who come in with either breach or transverse malpositioning who a few adjustments later, babies flipped and gone head down. So many, so many fantastic stories. Um, so let's explain how, why, why, how can we serve that role? One thing that you might've heard, or maybe your midwives or OBs have mentioned is the Webster technique. So this is a specific chiropractic prenatal approach that allows us to better care for pregnant moms. This is a certification that I have um, and that I stay up with very regularly. Uh, and really, there's a couple of things to highlight about this Webster technique. Webster technique. It's a very specific and gentle approach. During pregnancy, your body is changing, your center of gravity is shifting, it's causing different strains and stresses on your body. Uh, there's a hormone called relaxin that's loosening everything that's changing how your structure is holding. And so we need to be very gentle, very specific with those adjustments. The technique and the approach that we, that we use lets us accomplish that. It's also non-invasive. Um, people are, maybe you've been to a chiropractor, or maybe you are not really familiar with it. You think that there's possibility of injury or damage or anything like that. Absolutely not. Uh, it's one of the safest things you can do for yourself as well as for your baby. Um, there's extremely low to non-existent rates of, of out negative outcomes with that. Um, and one of the reasons for that is, like I said, we have specific prenatal training. I can't say that for everyone across the board. Um, we've had moms who've come in later in their pregnancy that were getting adjusted throughout their pregnancy that baby was in a malposition or for whatever reason, they didn't have the skills or the equipment to best care for a pregnant mom and she wasn't getting the care that she needed. So I, I should have the caveat of not just chiropractic care, but prenatal specific chiropractic care from an office who focuses on that sort of care. Maybe you're wondering, how can I lay on my belly because I've got this child in my belly. We've got special tables, special pillows that allow you to accommodate that um, so that you can get comfortable and that we are able to make the corrections that we need to. Um, so to explain how that works, I've got our little friend with the pelvis here. So imagine that the front of the pelvis is here facing you. The back is the back towards me here. And this is how baby enters the world. They have to go through that pelvic outlet. They're sitting up here in the uterus. And they've got to pass through this birth canal and then enter the world below. As you can see, uh, if everything's properly aligned and moving, we've got a nice open hole there. As there's rotation or misalignment, that birth canal changes a lot. The opening isn't as easy to pass through. And if we can imagine the uterus here, there's connections between the uterus and the sacrum, the back of your pelvis, that get twisted and get tight when there's misalignment and rotation within your pelvis. And so what that leads to is, one, it makes birth more difficult, and two, it makes it less likely that baby is going to get into an optimal position going through pregnancy, and it's going to make life more difficult for you. So that's what I want to touch on, it's kind of two of the big picture benefits of chiropractic during pregnancy. On one hand, is it's just going to make life easier for you. Reality is, growing a baby is tough. Your body's changing. There's a lot of aches and pains. Low back, neck and shoulders, hips are achy. There's so much that goes on. And by making these adjustments, by correcting those misalignments and fixations, it can lead to a lot better comfort, a lot less tension, uh, better sleep, and more energy for you. We've had people who started with us maybe seven months pregnant that they're at 38, 39 weeks. And they're like, you know what? I feel better now at the end of my pregnancy than I did two or three months ago, which if you're familiar with pregnancy at all, usually those last couple of weeks and months are a pretty sharp downward slope as belly just grows and baby is getting bigger and you're just done. So we can help basically just make life easier. So some of the benefits from on there prepares your pelvis to make labor and delivery and pregnancy an easier process removes tension on the ligaments in the, that support the uterus, which allows baby to get into a better position. It lets your nervous system function better because there's less obstruction to that, controlling the contractions, controlling the hormone balance, and just gives you a better chance of having that ideal birth without intervention. For the child, um, that really relates to how it can help the actual birth process be better. Like we talked about, we see so many issues with newborns and toddlers and older kids take root and have their um, or origin 
in a stressful intervention field birth process. So if that birth, if we can make that process easier, more gentle, um, less likely that it's going to need intervention, it's going to help the child have a better chance of optimal development. Internally, as they're still growing, making sure that there's no tension on the uterus gives them a better ability to move and have the freedom to grow and develop as they're supposed to. We want that cranium to have room to fold or to form. We want their spine to have the ability to elongate and to grow. Uh, and we want them to move into the best possible position for birth. You probably know that breech position or the head facing up is not good. There's very, very few birth providers who will attempt a vaginal birth with that. Um, transverse uh, positioning isn't going to allow your baby to pass through the birth canal in that ideal manner. So this, what we see with our care is that it very, very frequently leads to baby moving into a better position to make life easier for mom and easier for those birth providers, which is why the midwives and the OBs and, and those providers that we um, work with love it when their moms get adjusted because they know that that makes their job easier. That makes it makes it more likely that they're gonna not need to intervene and just let that process go as it's supposed to. Um, so, so many more things we could go into like we talked about before, but I just wanna give you a little sampling of how powerful and how impactful the role of prenatal chiropractic care can be during your pregnancy. Um, so how can we put this all together? Like we started out talking, the key of what I want you to do is to really take the wheel of your birth journey. I don't want you to have a home birth because we had a home birth. I don't want you to say, oh, well, I'm scared because of X, Y, and Z. I want you to have all of the information you need to make the best decisions possible. So that's what we started here tonight, that first point, educating yourself. That's going to lead to really the big, big, big key of choosing the right team. Prenatal chiropractic is a huge role in that. A doula is a huge role in that. And then the rest of those pieces, you're really going to help give yourself the best chance of a positive experience, positive outcome. That birth team is then going to help you formulate the plan that you want to have. It's going to, we're going to help you envision what your birth is going to be like. And that's where um, I want to help you do that by sending you a little, not a birth plan, but a, a birth journal. It's a few questions, a few prompts that you and your partner can think through to figure out what kind of experience, what kind of birth do I want? So if you're, you're watching this, please send us a message on Facebook, send us an email, whatever way you have of getting in contact. And I'll personally make sure that you get that um, pregnancy journal, pregnancy guide so that you can help using, you can help use that to start create your birth plan. Um, once you have that plan, it's about staying focused and maintaining balance. Life's unpredictable. If there's things that are gonna happen that you can't really predict, um, so it's a, it's a combination of staying focused, staying dedicated to your plan, while at the same time realizing that things might not go as I expect. I just want to give myself the best chance for a positive outcome that I can. Um, I'm going to pop off of our screen share here. So that's really what I, what I want to wrap up with is, is encouraging you to take the wheel, to be the um, decision maker with that, with the proper guides, with the proper support around you, because we want you to have the birth outcome that you deserve and that you um, really do want uh, internally. Like I said, I, the role of prenatal chiropractic um, within that is, is immense. And so we want to do whatever we can to help you. The way the new patient relationship with our office works is the first thing is always a complimentary consultation. That's a chance to learn more, to ask any question. There's no pressure. There's no, you know, you're kind of twisting your arm into doing an exam or paying for something. It is truly complimentary no commitments, um, just a conversation. Uh, if you do decide that you want to proceed and do that examination, let us do our, our scans and our analysis to figure out how your body's doing, how it's coping with pregnancy and how we can better help give you a better outcome. Um, mention that you checked us out on the webinar here and I'll make sure that you get a gift certificate for $50 off of that initial exam process. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope it was valuable, whether you're joining us live here this evening or catching up with this down the road. Our goal, our passion is to help you have the ideal birth in uh, the scenario that you really feel empowered and accomplished with at the end game there. Um, so let us be a resource, ask any questions and really looking forward to um, seeing how you go through that journey. So thanks guys. I hope you have a great rest of the evening and we will uh, talk again soon.